Well I have that body clean now, I've cleaned all the outside, top and bottom. I've cleaned the inside, made sure that there's no grease or dirt or film chips in there. This compartment at the front where the mirror and capping plate live. Now this I need to clean. There's a lot of grease around here, around the front here where the meter drum would run. There's possibly grease and dirt up the side here too, but one thing you need to note at this point is this spring here. This little coil spring, which I've just flicked off, and we'll now have to discover. I was going to say, be very careful not to lose that because it comes off easily and is easily lost. Of course now I've got to find it. That spring that I was just cautioning you to be very careful of, that's it there. Very easily lost. You can see how big it is. It's very light spring. It wants to get away. It's very important. Don't lose it. I almost lost it, but I'm pretty good at finding things like that because of practice, because many years of losing stuff, having them disappear to places that you can never find them from again, and recovering a good number of them along the way. Not all the time, but most of the time. And while I was down there looking for that spring, on the magnet I gathered up a screw that I'd lost the other day. So stuff does come back, it can just take a while. But springs, springs are, screws are easy, screws, unless they go up the vacuum cleaner, screws will still be there in an undamaged form. Things like springs, that's different. Springs, once they're loose, they're vulnerable to damage. You've only got to tread on them, catch them on something, and they can be bent up completely out of shape with very little chance that you'll get them back together again. Screws, fortunately, that's not the case. Now, I just caught that cleaning cloth on a spring then, and that was the spring on the, spring on the capping plate at this end. Uh, the spring's a bit misshapen now, so I'm going to have to get that spring out and straighten it up. That's what happens when you're a bit clumsy. So that little cover plate covered the other end of that spring. So I'll unhook it. Lift out that pin and the spring. Well, I lifted out the pin. I don't know see where the spring went. This is a disaster. I'll find the spring. Here it is. Here's my spring. And you can probably see that this loop is completely open at that end. It needs to be closed up. So I'm just going to reshape that spring with a pair of pliers and put it back in place. Well, so you've got a fighting chance of seeing what it is when I'm trying to get that spring back in place. I'll remove this shield, which is held in by two screws. Lift that out of the way completely. Okay. So now you can see down at the corner of that body, if I get this correctly aligned to the light, this little hook here on that lever, that was connected to one end of the spring. The spring passes through the body here at the base, and the other end of the spring is held in place with this pin. So basically I've just got to get the spring down there, hooked over that thing, stretched out, get the pin back across there, and she'll be Jake. Should be easy. Let's see if this can be done. Oh, 
All I need is another pair of tweezers. Oops, no, I dropped the pin and now the springs come off again. Where's a better pair of tweezers? Okay. See if I can get this done right. The spring through there. Hook it over that catch on the body. Before I do that, this is the right time. I'm going to dust that corner out, which was what I was wanting to do beforehand, and instead managed to dislodge the spring. The springs just a little bit misshapen not enough to cause us any grief it's also so light that it tends to fall off anything you're putting it on okay so there's my spring sitting in position can I stretch that thing out Well, I would do if I didn't knock the thing off. Of course, I have got spare parts, and I can go and get one of these springs from my spare parts. But I hate doing that. Excuse me while I clean these tweezers, they're covered in glue and uh, it's not helping. Well we have success, the spring is now back where it should be. And what was the secret of success? The secret of success was simple in this case. It was to put the spring in from this end, put the pin through the middle of it to hold it, hold that with my finger here so it couldn't fall off, reach in here with my tweezers, stretch the spring out and hook it over that little bracket easy why didn't i do that the first time oh well live and learn anyway i can probably clean in here a bit easier now while this baffle's out of the way and the baffle i'd also had to clean that because there was a bit of grease on the back but i managed to get that back clean that was one of the things I achieved while I was busy dislodging that spring. So what can we see in here? Well, these are the control levers for the capping plate and mirror. And you can see that this one here, this middle one, which is this one, swings down the mirror tray and if this was set in the cocked position let's get that back down if that was set in that position which it normally would be by that spring that I took off before and this would come down it would latch it would release that catch and it would latch in place the mirror would be in the resting position for viewing and when the shut is released it releases this thing which allows the mirror to flip up. That in turn allows the capping plate to flip up and the capping plate triggers the second action of the shutter because at that stage the shutter is still closed down and that triggers the second action of the shutter so the shutter will open and close for the timed exposure 
and then all this needs to be reset again for the next exposure. That capping plate would latch down if this spring was in the base of the camera to latch it. This piece would come down, click into place and you're ready to go for your next shot. All of that happens courtesy of the cam that runs across here and of course at the front part of the cam is busy driving the mechanism which will cock the shutter. And when everything's timed correctly and works nicely together, things just flip up out of the way and uh, all is jake. All is good. Right, so that's all looking quite good. These levers and things here are moving quite freely. I'm not seeing any problem with the way they move. Uh, sometimes they can be gummy. They can be slow to move. If they're slow to move, then they may move down under the action of the cam, but they may not release back up when they're supposed to release. And that can cause you problems. So it's important that these things are free. It's also important to note that if there's not a problem with them, leave them well alone because they're pretty awkward to get back together. It can be done. Um, I've had to do it often enough myself, but it's not something that you do just for the fun of it. If they're all moving nice and freely, if they're not obviously sticky with dried grease, leave them alone. They'll be great. If they're sticky with dried grease, they have to come out. I'll tell you about that in a second, but meantime I'm just cleaning in here. This is where the cocking rack would run, and I'm cleaning the top of those, those little wheels there. Just making sure this is all clean. That all looks very, very good here. I mean, there's, there's just no, no great wadges of dirty grease or anything to get rid of. This is a nice, clean camera body. It should be no great problem to put this back together again and get a good working camera. Um, the shutter, certainly there's probably issues with the shutter, but that just needs to be serviced. I mean, usually it comes down to the same thing, that stuff gets sticky. Sticky with dried lubricants, sticky with dust, things of that nature. Very rarely are there parts actually broken that need to be replaced. That can happen, but it's not common. It's most common for things just to need to be cleaned. Well, I'm carrying on cleaning up all these components. I'm dealing with the leatherette now. You can see this light stuff is corrosion. The dark stuff is adhesive. Um, the brown is adhesive. There's two different types at least of adhesive on this leatherette. And really, I'd like to get that scraped back down clean to the leatherette itself. That might not be achievable. But at least I want to get these smooth so that when they glue back down, they glue down firmly and they look nice and flat. The leatherettes appear to be in quite good shape, so that's that's a bunch. That's from the feel of that, I'd say there's some shellac there. Uh, just the the way that stuff feels. Reminds me of shellac, so there's probably some shellac on there. That's probably one of those adhesives, that dark brown one. The leatherette doesn't behave, it doesn't like alcohol. That's not good to the leatherette, so... Otherwise, if that was shellac, that would be the answer to remove it, would be to use some alcohol. I may be able to give that a bit of a wipe, but I certainly can't afford to soak the leatherette. It, will, it doesn't like it. This is quite a thick layer of stuff. I want to. I just need to get all these leatherettes clean. The same here. This is one of the leatherettes in the front. 
there's quite a thick amount of adhesive on here and really I want it off it's making the leatherette stiff and uh, less pliable than it otherwise would be which means that it'll be more brittle if I can get this rubbish off here it might be, be more flexible and be easier for me to deal with so I'll get this rubbish all off when I come to do the back this is the back here you can see there's a small hole here where I'll have to fill that but this white stuff that's just corrosion that's from the aluminium from the camera body and I presume that's an aluminium oxide might be something like that that's all got to come off because that's where the lumps and bumps are well I've got everything pretty much clean for the body so now we come to the fun part of putting it back together again so basically reassembling all the film advanced stuff the cocking rack putting the rewind and stuff on here chrome trim at the top a shortened chrome trim at the bottom to hold everything in place and generally getting it ready to refit the meter put the mirror back in place and various other tasks prior to servicing and refitting the front of the camera but this part's nice and straightforward so we'll start here so I'll start with some molybdenum paste I'm going to put the release lever and the lock lever back in so the guide holes I'll run some down there run some on that face there where the spring is going to run now I'm not putting much on here not doing much more than leaving a dirty mark on it to tell the truth molybdenum paste is a very good lubricant you need very little of it it's pretty much a dry film once it's on there and everything should go smoothly let's get this thing in here this is the lock lever putting that in place and the return spring for the lock lever we've got two springs that look much the same if you're a bit blind the one with a few a smaller number of coils and lighter wire is for the lock lever the other one is for the rewind lever the uh, release lever so we'll slide that on over the top I'm supporting the lock lever with my finger from underneath I'm compressing the spring with my thumb I'll take the circlip E clip C clip whatever you want to call it put that on there with the tail of my tweezers press it into place that's the lock lever back in position everything good the release lever has a spring on the lower tip and that's to keep it in contact with the cam on the film advance lever shaft so I've got to get this spring back in position over that boss on the lever sometimes that goes smoothly like that other times you seem to be struggling and slide this in take great pains not to get this spring caught over the edge of the body otherwise it'll bend it and you can have to take it all apart and straighten it out we'll put the return spring for the release lever in place that's the heavier of the two screws and here's the screw from the top of the release lever this is where the adjustment is made to get the shutter and the film advance to release at the same point in the travel of the shutter release button and we'll just start there and hope for the best because there's no practical way of telling how that's going to where that needs to be at this point we can adjust that later okay so we've got our lock and release levers in position on the body next thing I can deal with is the advance film advance shaft and the take up spool take up spool's got a slot in one end round hole at the other end we have a metal bush the metal bush goes into the round hole 
the round metal bush goes to the bottom. So open the back of the camera, put the film take up spool in place. Here's the film advance shaft. This was completely gummed up with sticky old grease. That's all been dealt to now. That's come out in the cleaning process. And I've got to lubricate this again. I'm going to use some graphite grease for that. Right, let's get some graphite grease in here. Need to make sure I get it between the bush and the shaft. So it's doing any good. This stuff's nice and tacky, it'll stay where it's put. Well, it'll stay on the surface as it's spread on. I'm putting some on the spring. So that that'll, the coils of the spring will roll over each other nicely. And the cam on the bottom of the film advance shaft, I'm just lubricating that with a bit of synthetic grease. Check that the holes are lined up here so I can actually get the screws through. And then put this into the camera body. Now with the reflex models, you want about a turn and a third of tension on the film advance lever so it'll return to the rest position smoothly. Normally you want a turn of tension. So I need to line this up so that it's in about the right place to give me one and a third turns. And that'll be about there. Line that screw holes up with the casting, of course. That seems okay. And fit the three screws in position. Just check that seated nicely in the spool. Yeah, it is. Sometimes the spring on that uh, advanced shaft pops out of its little notch and it won't line up. You can't push it into the take up spool easily. You've got to fiddle around with it till you get it right. That's the three screws in place. I'll tighten those up. Drag this back round to its normal rest position since the holes are always in line at that point. Okay, so that's in position. Just check that moves smoothly, that does. Bit of grease on there from the handling. And put the components on the top of the film advance. And the first component to start with is the clutch assembly. And as with the film advance, I'm going to lubricate this with some graphite grease. Okay, let's wipe some of this graphite grease in here. Try not to get my fingers completely covered in it. So, the spring goes on the centerpiece, it's got a tab on it, the tab drops into the notch. You've got to compress the spring to get this into the outer piece, so I use a pair of crimp lug pliers to hold that in place, rotate it to pull the spring in tightly, 
put the drum over the top, push it down, that's the job done. Here's the clutch assembly and it will move easier in one direction than the other and that's the direction it needs to move. So I'll put some synthetic grease through there, drop it in on top of the take up spool, rotate it until it engages with the notches and the take up spool. Now we can deal with the bush for the top of the film advance. First I want to force some grease into this little two little linked pinions here. So I'm just putting a blob of grease on there, squeeze it with my thumb and the hydraulic pressure just forces that in. I wipe through the centre and this can go in the body. If you rotate the take-up spool with your thumb you'll find that that'll engage the gear on the bottom here and that'll drop into place nicely. This is held in place with a single screw on this side, a long screw, pan head. This bush goes on next, plain side up, not counter side up countersink side up this little ratchet pull goes in on top of that and then this shoulder screw holds it all in place and I'll put a touch of grease around the shoulder of that screw Run that screw down, make sure it passes through the pawl and the pawl is free to move around that screw. That's good. Just nip that up. I may have to loosen those shortly, depends whether I can get the shaft down here without a fight. So we got the return spring for the pawl. That needs to go in. That goes in around the groove in the head of that shoulder screw. And it acts on the pawl to push the pawl towards the centre. You can see that the pawl is sprung loaded there. It doesn't have to be strongly sprung loaded. It's not doing a lot of work. To assemble the rest of the film advanced stuff on the top here, the gear and so forth, the advanced shaft has a great habit of falling out of alignment. When you press on it, it drops down, this swings underneath, causes your grief. I usually take this, put it in underneath, that supports the film advance while I'm putting everything on it. Here we've got this gear. I'll apply some grease to that, the underside of the outside edge and through the centre. Put this on here, if I rotate that counterclockwise it'll normally push the pawl away without any argument. And I'll just rotate that until it's running forward and aft. Got this spring. This goes cup shaped up, the tips are up. Sometimes you'll see them on back to front. That can be a nuisance. Right, this piece goes on. Plain side down. This piece goes on. One side's got slight bevels on it. One side's dead flat. Dead flat side up. Then we have this washer, then we have the gear, which sits over that squared top of the shaft. Look closely at the gear 
if it's got one damaged tooth, you can arrange it so that the damaged tooth is over here. It'll never contact the rack. You've got no problem with it. Right, the screw that holds all that in place. That's this thing. So you're going to focus. Focus your bugger. This is, twist, this is all distorted. It's been pulled down too tight when this was not correctly assembled. So the outside edges of this screw are pulled up. That's in danger of breaking. I'm not going to use that. That would only end up causing tears down the road. So we won't do that. I'll put a replacement in. And I've got a special screwdriver for doing this, but of course I haven't got it in front of me. So I'll see if I can get this started with a pair of tweezers. And you need to run that screw down without disturbing the gear that's neatly sitting around the squared end of the shaft. Otherwise you'll end up doing the screw up very tight and nothing's going to work. I'll find the screwdriver.